Hi, and welcome to the build video for the mostly second-hand and budget home theatre PC. Over to the side of me, I've got all the pieces, all the bits. So, I guess what that means is that I shouldn't do too much messing around and I should just get on with the video. So, uh, stay tuned, enjoy the introduction, and uh, let's get on with it. What you're going to want to do here is take apart the Node 202 case. So you can do that by so. As you can see this is a little bit battered, but after all, it's second hand. So four screws are at each corner here. One here, one here, one here, one here. So once you've taken this case apart, then what we'll do is just flip it open and take off the top cover. Remember to keep those screws in a reasonably safe place because you are going to want them later. Now, you might notice this case does actually come with rubber feet on the bottom. What this does is it just lifts the case slightly off the ground and allows airflow. Um, there's some markings here from tape, I haven't taken them off yet, but I will clean it up. Now the previous owner of this case actually put the rubber standoffs in the level of the case where it was, it was close to the fans rather than the outside elevated part. Now what that meant is you, you're going to lose a couple of millimetres of clearance. Not a big deal, but in a low profile case, you're going to want as much cooling as you can get. Now the screws are at the bottom of the case, it's just a simple task of taking off the top panel and putting it down somewhere soft, somewhere safe, just so it won't get scratched. So as you can see here, the power supply is already in the case. When I purchased it, it was a, a combo deal, so you might note all these cables here. Um, I didn't do any of this cable management, it was already done. Um, I won't cover that in this, you know, in, the, in this case there's not that much management to do, it's just a case of, of strapping it to the bottom and getting the cables anywhere that they can fit. So I would anticipate halfway through this build I'm going to have to mess with these cables anyway to get my components in. Okay, so we've got our pile of bits. What I want to do now is, is focus on the motherboard a little bit. So the case is open, right, it is, it is ready for our parts. But when you put items in a case it's simply too tight to actually start messing around uh, and, and trying to get your fingers in and mess with the caller, you know, sh stuff, the, stuff the ram in. So what I'll actually do first is do it out in the open, put the new CPU into this motherboard, put the caller on, put the new RAM in and see how we go. Right, so if we get the old RAM out, this sad two gigabyte stick, and see if we can wrestle this caller out. So I do know this board actually works because I've done a little bit of prep for this video. I, I plugged the video in um, into just the motherboard with this RAM and the existing i3 chip just to, to make sure that everything was working as I expected. So if the rest of this build goes woefully wrong, then it's, it's not the board, it's something else, which I can deal with. Oh, I hate taking these original uh, corners out, they're a right pain. It's, uh, two, three. Four, and just pop that out. Now I'd be interested to see what the state of this thermal compound is, whether or not they've, uh, they've messed with it too much. Okay, it actually had a reasonable coverage from the start. Quite cool. Let's just pop this window up right here. Now I have got my replacement chip here, so let me open this up first. Might be able to see that. So just an Intel i5-4670K like we went over on the last video. Not the fastest chip compared to the modern chips, but at the time, pretty damn fast. So this chip will have, have no thermal compound on it, which is you know, when we get to the caller, you'll actually see what I do with that. Let's, let's just whip this chip out and put it down in a, a, some relatively safe space. I'll just put it over on this static bag over in the corner. You've got to be reasonably careful with these motherboards. Because the pins, unlike on some of the, the AMD chips, are actually on the board. So when you're taking out the CPU and putting it back in, it's probably just worth checking that there isn't any damage. You can normally see this by odd reflections. Um, interesting, I can see actually a couple of odd reflections here, but the last chip worked, so I don't see any reason why this one shouldn't. So I'll get rid of the stock caller. I'll also get rid of the box that the, uh, the i5-4670K 
4670K came in because I don't need that because I won't be using it. So what we've got here is that, that big old cryo rig cooler that I'm telling you about. It, it weighs significantly more than the last one. I'd, I'd estimate three, three times the amount. I don't know for sure. Um, hopefully that'll show when it's actually cooling the thing. We'll see how well it performs. Before you do anything with this cooler, there is a little plastic cover at the bottom. Um, you don't want to get caught forgetting to take that off and just plonking on the chip, as I know some people have done. That would be interesting. Let's just take that off. Nice and clean. How satisfying is that? How satisfying is that? Right, in the box, it came with some thermal compound. So, th fairly basic stuff. High density cryo paste. Well, it'll do, whatever it is. Better than nothing. What I like to do is, when I first put this on, try to do this with clean hands, by the way, because if you've got oil or kind of any sort of grease on your hands at all, you might end up with hot spots on the CPU, which isn't pretty. I like to put just, just a little bit, just a little bit. I don't know if you can see this. I might zoom in the video when I actually show you. I'll put a little tiny spot. You can probably barely see that, but I like to put a little, little tiny spot on the corner and just and just key it all over a little bit. And we'll we'll use a piece of the cardboard that it came with because uh, I'm fancy like that. We'll just scrape it over a bit. Just try to keep most of it on the board. In fact, I might need a little bit more than that. Do put a little, not quite enough on. And just just key it all over. Well, as most as you, as much as you can anyway. I'm not sure, too sure why I did this. I, I read it somewhere once and it just became a habit. All right, so we've got it keyed on a fair bit. Obviously, this isn't going to be the bulk of the calling anyway. Again, habit. I think I did it once because uh, I read that if you made up for, if you, if you didn't put enough um, coolant on the chip, then it might help. So put that over there. Um, this chip is fairly sort of fragile. So what I'll do is I won't put it straight down the cardboard. I'll put it straight into the... Um, into the socket here and um, throw a couple of little notches actually so it's very very self-explanatory on an intel chip um, but you just line up the notches in the board and, and plop it in right so there we go so it's now sort of on the board safe it's not moving it's fine so i'm very going to going to very gently just put some thermal compound on this now, there are a number of different techniques that people say some people swear by a line some people swear by a dot in the middle um, the ultimate answer to this is make sure you put enough on. You know, there have been enough studies now to tell you that the only, the only time that the calling becomes compromised with thermal compound or a lack of thermal compound is not, put, not putting enough on. So don't put loads on and make it splurge everywhere, but just put a nice kind of middle amount on. Um, I'll, I'll actually do this in four little dots just to make a bit of a change. One, two, three, four, I may have put a little bit too much on this, but let's just see how this goes. I'm barely going to spread this out, to be honest. They talk about a grain of rice. Um, I'd say a grain of big rice, not basmati. I'll clamp the chip down so it's not going to go anywhere. And then we'll get about to mounting this cooler. So this cooler itself is compatible with a variety of different chips. Um, I do believe this is set to the correct one. This is, yeah. It does actually come within AMD clips as well, but you can see all these different holes that are for different Intel chips. So what I'll do is I'll just put this under the board and just make sure that all the holes line up correctly. Again, I'm pretty sure they do, but let's just double check. Right, I think we're, uh, I think we're there. Let's. Uh, try and mount this uh, this bad boy. So you can see here what we're, what we're actually doing. Um, you've got some heat fins here. In a small, in a large case, it probably won't matter, but since this case is quite large, uh, what we're actually gonna do is make sure that the fins are running parallel to the RAM so the hot air doesn't blow out directly towards the RAM. It, it actually blows out, there you go, straight towards the clear side of the case. Flip this over. Oops, I may have put that on the wrong way. That's my mistake. All 
All right, so this is on. This is plastic, so it's non-conductive, so you don't have to worry about a thing there. We do have some bolts sitting around here. I believe they're in this bag. Yep. And a very handy spanner, which I'll, I'll actually use the one that comes with it, seeing as though it looks pretty solid. It looks fine. Okay, so we've got the four bolts. Let's put these on one at a time. So you should be able to identify which way they go on. They go on the flat side first, obviously. Put them down. And the important thing here is you want to apply even pressure across the caller. So we'll put one on, but we'll put it on very gently. And then we'll put one on the opposite corner as well. So we'll put one here. Because the, the, the last thing that you want to do, right, is, is put... Oops, I think I might have actually done this already. The last thing that you want to do is put one side on really, really tight. Because what, what you're either doing is you're, you're compromising how the, the core is sitting on the CPU, but you, you're also potentially compromising the chip itself because you're putting too much weight on it. Right, that's two of those on. Um, that's the most awkward bit, really. Once you've got two of them on, yeah, they're largely there. Right, so that one looks. Get the rest of these on. Right, get the other one ready there. Yeah, there, there is a limited amount of flex in this plastic, so you should be fine. Just don't, don't overdo it. You know, you'll, you'll know if you're overdoing it. Probably want to put that one down a tad more. So, as you can see, this caller isn't going anywhere, um, which is quite good because I actually like manipulating the case using this. You know, I don't like touching the board too much itself at risk of static, uh, which is worth noting, actually, if you're doing this yourself, do try to wear a static wristband. Um, I'm, I'm just taking the risk at this point. Um, I've got it on an insulating piece of cardboard, so I don't, you know, short circuit it when I run it, but I'm not wearing a wristband myself. So official recommendation, wear a wristband. All right, let's flip this thing over. Um, the board weighs significantly now, now, uh, now, funny enough. Significantly more now. Significantly now, now. That would be an interesting turn of phrase. Uh, on the board, there should be a CPU fan. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it is is—it is just right here, right next to the fan. Um, I actually, I didn't think about this before I put this wire in. So there's not a good way to manage this. So let's just put this straight in there. If you watch one of my other tech bites, you'll see why these, oops, why these pin connectors are actually four pin. These are PWM. Full width modulation. Right. That's one in there. That does look pretty bad, so off camera I might actually tidy this up a bit, but we should be fine. Right, that's one in. So what we've got next is, because we took our old two gigabyte stick out, we've got a couple of eight gigabyte sticks here from Crucial, uh, the Ballistic Sport, very low profile. I didn't particularly want the very low profile, I didn't mind, but it is a happy extra. I bought this on, on eBay, I think it was. Check, check my previous video out, because then you'd actually find out the pricings and the parts. Don't recall this being particularly cheap. Right, so if you make sure that the hole lines up with a slot on the board and just push down securely on each side. I do tend to push the clips in on the side again, but you don't have to, it should do it itself. Let's take our second stick from the pack. And again, doing exactly the same thing, making sure the slots line up, which they do. Getting rid of that little tiny bit of air there. I push it down one side, so it closes, it does actually pretty much close itself. And the second side. So the board is largely prepped here. CPU fan on, RAM's on. You might think I'm ready to put this in the case, uh, but no, not quite. The best thing for you to do at this point is actually check that it's working, or at least check that it posts. You know, check check that it does something. So what I'll do now is I'll I'll just plug her in and see what she does. I'll turn her on. So I have made the next bit very difficult for myself, or very awkward, I should say. Um, I've just left the power supply in the case. 
So that with a combination of short wires is going to be pretty complicated. Now remember, before you plug anything into the motherboard from the power supply, make sure that your power supply is off. So for the safety brief, this is it. I'm just wiggling the, uh, the power cable off just to show that it's not plugged in. I've just got it in case so it doesn't drop on the floor. So let me take this incredibly short cable from the power supply. You can see it's just a standard 24 pin. We'll plug this into the board here, right by the RAM. Now, I did do this last time, it was pretty tight, so it was a bit awkward to get out. I don't know if I'll keep that in on video, I haven't decided yet. So I'm putting it in, a lot easier than taking it out. And then around here somewhere, we should have our four pin. You can tell I'm extremely prepared for this. Okay, so here we've got, it's, it is, it's an eight pin really, it's a four plus four, but this board does only need the one. So you just make sure that you get the right plug really. So let's, uh, let's make sure that I've got this, this right plug here. One, two, three, four. Oh, that's clearly the correct one. Let's get this thing plugged in as well. It's gonna be very awkward, like I said. In fact, I'm gonna have to move this camera over a little bit just to even bring it close enough to look. And twist this round. And the only reason we're doing this is just so we don't have to put it into the case to figure out it's not working. So we've got the thing plugged in. Let me just check this camera to make sure that we've got the correct angle. Okay, we've got something. Yeah, that'll do. So we, we haven't got a on off switch on the connect case actually connected to, to this motherboard at the moment. So what that means is we've just got to manually, uh, effectively just put a little jumper between the switches now. Just as just as a switch would. So if I take this, that, that is plugged in correctly, the CPU is plugged in. I'll wrap this round here. The wire is actually on this side on this case, the opposite side to the power supply, because they ran the, the cable all the way through, which is interesting. Alright, we've got her plugged in. Let's switch her on and find out if she works. If it starts making any funny noises, I'm just gonna run. So save yourselves. So on the board, there should be one here that says front panel. It looks very similar to, to the USB uh, it, with one pin kind of flicked around. Doesn't really matter too much, just make sure that you find the right one. There's LEDs, hard drive LEDs, a reset button and power button. So what you're going to, what you're going to want to do rather is just connect the two pins for power. Now the fan's up. I did just realize, or just think, that there is actually no buzzer on this. So I don't think this is going to beep at me. So what we're going to want to do is just plug in the source very carefully. Or the output of the source. Plug the monitor in. And just effectively wait to see if we get an output. Now it says no signal at the moment. Still says no signal. Okay, let's turn her off. Again, these are second hand components, so we're not entirely sure if they're functioning. I was rather hoping that they would. Right, okay, we actually have got something on the screen says um, and I could actually turn your screen around to show you this if I could turn around one of the cameras you can see all my, all my mess here so it does say that one of the memory or one of the memory channels didn't pass the CPU memory test so I'm hoping that doesn't mean that we've got a faulty stick so what I'll do is I'll take it out and reset it or reseat it and try again. But they are both fully seated. So let's try again. I'll be really disappointed if this doesn't work actually on both. And let's just see if the thing boots up. Right, 
you've booted. So let me just turn this camera around again. I should probably just point that purse permanently at the screen because who wants to see my face, really? You can see it's booted up to the BIOS. The reason it's booted up to the BIOS is I've got nothing in there to suggest that it could boot at all. You know, I've got no hard drive, nothing. So what this is just doing is it's just taking me to a configuration screen where I can start enabling or disabling some of that stuff. So in a case this small, you have actually got to think about what you're going to try and put in first. So I haven't planned out this build at all. So you get to see it in raw live action. So I think the best option here would have been to fit the solid state drive before the power supply was in there. Now I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take a, a really, well, a really bad shortcut, if I'm honest, but I think we're all guilty of it. Instead of putting four screws in, I'm going to just try and put as many as I can in from the position I'm in. So I think that's going to end up being about two but we'll, we'll see where we can go. So interestingly with this case, and I did earlier, with a brand new case, you get the screws, you get kind of everything you need, you get all the wires if you buy a brand new power supply, you'll, the power supply will come with a cattle lead. My case didn't come with any of that. It didn't come with all the modular cables, it didn't come with any standoffs, it didn't come with the kettle lead to plug it in. You know, it pretty much came with nothing, it came as is. Uh, it came with a 24 pin, so all I could do was plug that in. So what I had to do was I had to buy some modular cables. I had a kettle lead just kicking around, and I had to use some standoffs that I, I had already as well. So all these screws, you know, they can add up as well. So it may, it may, well, I'm not saying this for sure, but it may have been cheaper for me to get one of those items, you know, individually if I didn't have the spares already kicking around. You know, we, we do actually have quite a nice spacer here, which is nice and a nice thought by Crucial. Um, I'm going to try to get away with using as little as I can, though. I think what we'll do is just slide this in that way. We It is worth considering, actually, which direction your cables go, or which way they strap in. So this, this cable is straight. It's not got an L shape to it at all. Uh, my SATA cables are not not the same, however. We've got one. Well, no, we have got one straight. So what I'll probably do is just use two straight cables just to make sure that we can build this without kind of compromising and winding the wires in really strange directions. So with this case, I could just tape it on. I've seen some people tape it on and uh, <laughs> as tempting as it is, because this case is very awkward, like I said, what I'm going to try and do, at least initially, is do this properly. This is all items that probably would have had to come out anyway, so it don't feel too bad for me. I know what you're thinking, you don't feel bad for me at all, do you? One screw. So this PCI riser card, or PCIe riser card rather, and the Node 202 is really useful. So unlike traditional mini ITX builds, where you can't put a card or a full-size card in vertically, this PCIe riser card allows you to put a standard full-size graphics card in this end slot here by flattening it out and making it horizontal. Very nifty, especially for those of you who, uh, who are looking to create a really powerful compact build. Take this screw out here. And slide the whole thing out like so. I'm trying to avoid this again because that's been cable tied to that by the previous person. I might have to chop that. Uh, I might just be able to just plant this on. Let's have a, have a quick look. Yeah, let's let's just try that. See if we can just put it straight in. Get our screws ready so we're not messing about. Okay, now we've got a screw. Let's uh, put one of these into here. Hopefully this will work. I, uh, I've literally just mixed up these screws. Just give me a second. Okay. So what we'll do here is just slide this in on the inside like so.
You could argue at this point, I could put all the screws in, but we don't need four screws. Four screws, it's two screws too many. Said no one ever. Feel free to, to skip over this part if you want. It's gonna be very boring. screws into the case. As tempting as it is to just put one screw in, not even on that bad. drives in there finally we're beating it I think at this point it's uh, no 202 three Joe one uh, slowly getting there slowly getting there let's make sure that this is lined up on both sides there's a couple of pins and just slide that back I think I've missed one so now the PCI Express riser is actually out of the way and the hard drives in what I can do is just try and drop the case in there. So at this point, what you'll want to do is get your input and output, and you'll, you'll want to put that on first. Plenty of build has been made without me putting this on first, and you've, you've put the whole thing together and then gone all down. Because there is absolutely no way of getting this I.O. on the case after you've already got the motherboard in there. Believe me, I've tried, right, and it's not, not a pretty look. So that, that is in there like so. Some people do chop these metal items back or fold them out. Um, I won't do that this time because it doesn't look overtly like any of these will get in the way. I'll probably eat my words later on, but we'll see. Now we have got four integrated standoffs on this case. Uh, being as though this is quite a small board, obviously it's only mini ITX, it only has four screw holes anyway. line this up. If you've got a magnetic set of screwdrivers this is ideal, but this set unfortunately isn't. It is far easier at that point. So I'll try and get one of these screws in into the case just to keep her lined up. So a magnetic long uh, kind of long thin screwdriver would be ideal for this. Um, I'll say I, I, I haven't got one, so I'm using this. There we go. So that's that's the board in. Uh, before I forget, what we'll do is we'll just plug the riser in here. Let's uh, move this round while we've got space. So I think I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to take this apart as well. I think I might. Just taking the riser apart gently. And I'll plug this into our board. So you can see here, it's just a, a single PCI Express here. Single PCI Express port rather. It's actually a PCI X16. Slide the clip back. Push it in firmly. There's a little bit of flex on this board, don't be too worried. And we'll clip that back. And then we can simply plug this in. Again, this is going to be a bit of an awkward view for the guys using the vertical camera. I can only apologise. Okay, and that's plugged in. So, because there's not that many components to this build, we're, we're actually really getting there. So, our CPU is in there, our RAM, our motherboard. Our PCI Express riser is in there because that's for the graphics card. What we can do now is just try and run these cables through relatively the same way that they were. 
All right, job done. Okay, so we have a USB 3.0 connector, which has got to go to the far side of the board somehow. Let's, uh, let's pull this round, wish me luck. And on the same connector here, we've just got it kind of cable tied together, but it is actually quite separate. We do have HD audio, which my instinct tells me, and by the shape, is this slot over here so this is very tight so let's see if we can plug in the HD audio first without causing issues okay so HD audio is in and let's see if we can't get this in as well I think in all my enthusiasm I may have bought a board without USB 3 all right, I've royally messed this one up. I, uh, I bought a motherboard with only USB 2.0 headers on it. And the front panel only has USB 3.0. Um, so with what I've got, this isn't gonna work. So what I'm gonna have to do is go online and buy an adapter cable and hope that works instead. Remember, do as I say, not as I do. So we'll leave that unplugged just for now and move on to something else. Now, what fortunately is compatible on here is these headers. So if I can show you these four, these wires here, it doesn't have a reset button, but it does have LEDs. So I've just got the power LED and I've got the power switch. So we'll get this plugged in like so. Again, sorry for my head being in the way. I can't avoid it. This in here. We'll do our best to get these plugged in as well. All right, so we've got those cables plugged in. Okay, so now what we're gonna to want to do is plug a 24 pin in, if we can. Let's try and get that in there first. And we will have to figure out a way to get this managed somehow. But we'll do that after we plug it in. I think that's how we'll do it. And we do have our four plus four pin here and we do know this works. So let's at least try to route this somewhere out the way. So we'll route this behind the 24 pin and around and plug it in like so. Oh, there we go. We took that inside there so it's out of the way. That shouldn't cause us any problems. So this next one will be a tad awkward because it is our SATA connector. In fact, what I might do before we uh, plug this one is, is just tie this down back here. So it's always a good idea to have some Zip ties handy. Let me just check the handle on this. And what this will do is just keep this at least relatively tidy for the time being. And because it might be awkward to get to the SATA connector afterwards, we'll actually get our, our cable out now and see if we can wire this in already. In fact, if this one will work, our 90 degree head will actually work on this. So if we plug this in here, like so, very awkward.
remind me to never do a, uh, a mini RTX build ever again. Right, we'll uh, do this in the possibly worst possible way. I'll chuck this round here for now. Before I fully manage this, I will make sure the lot works because, you know, sod's law, none of this will actually work when I plug it in. And what you'll want to do is actually plug this into SATA zero. It won't make too much difference, but plug it into the first one that anything searches for any motherboard will mean it's a tad quicker. Right. And we'll just tuck that down there because the cable management's beautiful. Right, there we go. And we'll take our power connector, like so, and we'll also wire that in here. These cables always seem to be twisted the opposite direction to the way you actually need them. Again, sod's rule. And we'll try to plug the excess cables in and stick them in this gap here, like so. Now, that's unfortunately not the last cable, so I think I've left myself a little gap here. Let's unplug this cable. Put our flat cable through this gap, like so. And then plug our SATA back in, and now we've got room. There we go. I was hoping we'd get a bit of airflow air flow through this gap, and it's obviously not really going to happen, is it? So the way that we took this case out was just, there's some plastic clips around the side. So you're, you're not going to be able to put the fans in without flipping the metal chassis upside down. So to separate the plastics, there's some clips around the edges. So a couple here, um, three on each side, uh, one on the back. So what you'll want to do is, the way I kind of did it was lift this plastic up and bend it a little bit, bend it back and then clip your way down the sides and it should come out fairly easily. Getting it back in, however. Let's try and get the front IO in first, and then the rest should just, with some luck and judgment, drop into place like so. If you push it down there. So our fans are in, there are no restrictions on that. There is some cable wrapping around it. I'll do my best to get that out of the way. Let's see if we can tuck this down here. Okay, so the cables are now out of the way of the fan. I am not going to be able to get a second fan in here, so it does advertise itself um, as having slots for 220mm fans, and that is absolutely true. There is space for two 120mm fans, if you're willing not to have a graphics card. Now I'm sure there are kind of hack jobs out there, I could put the graphics card in here without this, this support here, so it's just under its own weight, or I could bodge my bracket, I won't be doing that, so for now. I will just use one one intake for this case and see how it goes. There aren't really any dedicated exhausts per se, so I think we'll be fine. We'll still maintain some sort of positive pressure. It might just get a little bit hotter than I was intending. All right, now for the PSD resistance, the graphics card. Let's just whip this out of the box really quickly. 
that really is interesting about that USB 2 and USB 3 port. And it's not something that you'd necessarily think about a huge amount when you're buying new cases. You know your board's gonna, gonna be compatible with the case. Um, so with this being such a new case, with it being really a, an antiquated motherboard at best, um, the differences really are quite phenomenal. So we've got our card here. So in the same way that you'd fit it into a normal case, it will just plug into this riser here. Let's just give it a shot and see how we get on. This really is going to be quite awkward again because this is going to have to drop down through here and slide over. Let's just make sure that's supported and held in place. Okay. Fasten this on and see how it goes. This is the test. Does anything fall out? No. go so card is now theoretically in now the only thing i'm missing is this six plus two pin cable here um, it's only a six pin on the card so you know no no kind of biggie i've just got to wrap this round on itself which is just just long enough and plug it in all right so that cable shouldn't fall into there i'll leave cable management now now it's all plugged in and together let's get a spun up and see if she works. Right, let's turn this thing on. Right, that's on, that's on. First test is the power button. Well, the power button works, <laughs> which is a, a pleasant surprise. So you should be able to see the screen now. Let's, let's go into the BIOS, and I've totally missed it, but it doesn't really matter. Just restart, let's go into the BIOS. So we're in the BIOS. Uh, what can we tell? Well, we've got, we've still got our chip and we've got our RAM in there is kind of is broken let's see if we can find the advanced boot or the storage so sata is enabled and it's recognized now hard drive which is uh, which is basically a, a, a great start so i was i was fully expecting that to work obviously uh, let's just see how we get on so what i'll do i'll install windows and then we'll get on with it and we'll have a look at what windows sees and we'll see if this graphics card is working to its full potential. It's clearly working though, because as you can see on the video down here, the HDMI is now plugged into my, my GTX 1060, so it is working. So that is a great start. To put this case back together, all I've done is flip the case back upside down. You should be able to see that on one of the views. And using my four screws that I did save up from earlier on. I hope you did too. Or just screw the case back together. Like so. Now, no matter what I did, I couldn't stop this mesh coming into contact with the fans when it was on the inside of the case. So to get a, a mesh filter, I think what I'll do is I'll adapt the original and just put it onto the bottom of the case like so, just so it stops it sucking in any dust. Okay, so now we've finished the build. I just wanted to run a quick benchmark on the machine, run a quick stress test, just to see what we're dealing with. So as you can see on the screen, I've been running this stress test for about an hour, hour and eight minutes. I'm using the tall ADA 64. And what we're seeing is very consistent, decent temperatures across the board. So we can, we can see peaks of 76 on the processor. Practically, that's not sort of a, a stable temperature. We're seeing the, the sensors kind of jump up and down a little bit, but we are regularly seeing numbers around about the 72 mark, which is more than acceptable for a, an i5 4670K. And if you look at the GPU uh, down in the GTX 1060s at the bottom, you can see a reading of 66 degrees at the moment and a maximum of 68. So again, well, well within bounds. Uh, we've actually got some, some numbers to play with here. Because I wanted this machine to be silent, um, I, we might have to mess with the fan speeds a little bit. So at the moment, the, the fan is running and it is audible. The GPU fan is quite loud and audible. And so is the CPU fan. 
Interestingly, the CPU fan actually hasn't changed that much since we ran the stress test. So before I started running this, I did note quite a high kind of audible temperature or uh, temperature. Uh, it was quite audible anyway, it's quite loud. So I think what we'll have to do is mess with that fan curve as well and see how we go. But so far, so good. So for a really quick benchmark test, just to see what we're dealing with, I'm going to use user benchmark just to give me a, a measure against the community to be a community about how fast this PC is running. So this is just going to run through a number of really quick tests um, based on the CPU, memory, hard drive and the graphics card just to, well, like I said, measure against the community, see, see what scores I'd expect to be getting. Uh, this is a very quick test. Um, it's not a stress test by any means, but it does give us a small snapshot of what the PC is capable of doing. I'm not expecting any marvellous performance from this. You know, there's nothing overclocked. The GPU is running at standard. You know, clearly, if we wanted to, we could actually up, up, up the clocks of both the CPU and the graphics card because we've got we've got kind of that that little gap in temperatures, presumably because the CPU core is you know excellent and the graphics card core is is working well and as expected. But as a as a stock measure, we'll be able to see how this goes. There shouldn't be any particular bottlenecks in this machine. You know, I'm I'm running the graphics card in a, a PCI Express slot that shouldn't throttle the bandwidth of the card. So what I'm expecting is to round up about the 50th percentile, you know, somewhere so in, somewhere in the middle on, on pretty much everything. All right, so we've got our results, which have come up on screen now. No, as a desktop machine, it says it's an aircraft carrier, 87%. I'll take it. Uh, for gaming, not so much. It's apparently a yacht and for a workstation, 37%. So whatever those numbers mean, <laughs> they're quite entertaining anyway, um, then uh, <laughs> take of that what you will. Scrolling down, it says our i5 is performing above expectations, interestingly. <laughs> whatever, it's not a particularly special board. Again, I'll take it. So it's, it's running around about the 72, uh, 72nd percentile, so in the top 28%. So, I mean, it's, it's not exceptional, you know, it's, it's running just fine. Uh, graphics card, it's running slightly below expected. Uh, in fact, what I've done here is I ran this test and I, I did absolutely forget to disable the monitor sync. So the, uh, the benchmark isn't quite accurate, but I did run this benchmark before and it actually benched at 52% without the monitor sync. So there's actually no difference. You know, this, this is trying to tell me that it's performing below its potential, but really it's, it's not in my opinion, you know, in my previous benchmark, I'll prove that. The drive is performing as a slightly below expected on this occasion. Last time I ran the bench, it ran over expected. So I, all I can take from that is perhaps something's running in the background, so I'll leave it there. And the memory performing way above expectations, apparently. Uh, again, I don't know how this is. Presumably it's because it's paired with the i5-4670K chip. Um, and perhaps of this generation on DDR3 RAM, most, most boards maybe didn't use a chip that proficient. So the PC is actually performing fairly reasonably. So I'm very pleased with this build. It's a shame I wasn't able to get the second fan in. I think what we'll do is uh, another video in future where we can compare it with this fan off. We'll, we'll try to get the second fan in there. We'll take the, the graphics card stabilization point out. So the graphics card's just you know, it's screwed in, it's not a heavy card and I think it would have actually been fine. So we'll, we'll put the second second one in and mess about with the cooling and, and see what we can do. Um, we'll, we'll try and make the PC a tad quieter as well. So it's it's somewhere <laughs> approaching a level that you'd want, not a console because, you know, that they're really quiet anyway, but, you know, somewhere between a console and the level this is at to make it more acceptable to sit below a PC. This has been Bare Naked Tech and we have built a budget and somewhat second-hand home theatre PC. If you like this video, please hit the like button below. And remember, we are doing more videos based on this PC in the future, so subscribe if you'd like to see more of those. See you next time.